JJ, uh, and I'm setting up the uh, Aria mirror today with the, uh, what's it called, the Miller Cine 5X, I believe. So first we'll start with unclipping our top plate legs up here, lift the whole thing up, make sure that the base is evenly spread out. Down, down, down. Oh. Now, next you want to do is just make sure that you actually balance the tripod properly. So we get our light down here so we can actually see our adjustment bubble. Then we have our adjustments for how much resistance we have with, on this side, our tilt, and then on this side, our pan adjustments. We have our locking mechanism for the tilt right there. That locks that one in. And then we have our locking for pan right there. So first with the tripod, we want to unlock our top mount. Grab our Ari Amira, make sure the base plate is on nice and tight, and then Latch it in on the left, on the right side, drop it in on the right, and then close this latch right here. Make sure that we are nice and stable. Then, because this camera is quite heavy, we have a counterbalance dial on the back here, but we also want to adjust our tightness on the tilt just so that we don't have the camera drifting while we're doing stuff. So, first up, when we're mounting the lens, we want to make sure that we take our cover off, make sure that it's horizontal, and then we take our nice Zeiss lens, take that back plate off, and then we want to line up the contacts on the top with the contacts on the top here, and then we lock in the PL mount like that. And then at that point, when we actually start shooting, is when we can actually take the lens cap off and we have full access to our lens. If you wanted to adjust follow focus, you've got your rails positioned here or your rails positioned here, depending on what kind of follow focus rig you've got. So pretending that the battery wasn't on in the first place, we've got these batteries here. Now these mount onto the charger, like so. They're just standard V-mount batteries. And you've got a nice few battery chargers and a few batteries on the charger. The only thing is it needs to be balanced, otherwise it will most likely fall over. So when we're mounting the battery to the camera, we have this lock here for getting the battery back off again, but it's just lining up that V-mount and then clicking it in place and it's nice and secure. So next we move to the actual camera itself where we have first up our power button. Now our power button is right there, hit that, wait for the screen to turn on and then we have to wait the millennia for the camera to actually start up. So first we have our user settings here. You have three different options for our user settings which allows for whoever's operating the camera to have all of their preset stuff uh, before a shoot. That way you're much faster on set. So you've got your exposure index which is where you have your three preset settings for your uh, ISO. I believe it's 400, 800 and 1600, but I'm gonna double check on that one. And then we have our white balance presets here. Then we've got our adjustable buttons here. These four buttons uh, act as eight buttons if you use that shift one, so that you have eight presetable uh, hotkey buttons. We've also got our auto white balance there. We've got our record button there. And to adjust the viewfinder, you undo this dial, uh, this screw here, and then you can adjust it. So on the top, we get our focus peaking, we have our exposure, as well as these two VF1 and 2 buttons which let us add our presets for our viewfinder up here. And then we've got our big red record button and our menu button. One button that you need to remember is this one on the underside. We have our play button down here for our actual video playback. That way you can review what you've shot, which is pretty important. When we're in the menu, I'm going to hit menu and we can navigate using the wheel on the side as well as you've got your buttons up top and on bottom corresponding to the buttons on the screen. If it's not a touch screen, don't try and touch the screen. If we open our menu system, go into our recording, we want to set to what the SAE uh, standard has set, which is our 422 HQ, ProRes, resolution of 2K. We we'll want to double check our project settings, make sure that we're at 25p. Um, reset your reel to one. Um, our record mode is normal. Uh, you can have your record beeper on if you want, uh, depending on how what kind of feedback you want when you're filming. Then we've got just our audio settings here, which also we have our manual audio settings here for easy adjustment, plus our XLR points on there. We've got three XLR points and one headphone out, plus our little. So when we want to format the cards, we go into our menu system, go to media, and then raise card, and then we need to make sure that we hit the corresponding button. And back and then we've got our other ones or delete last clip if you want to just quickly remove stuff and then we've got our monitoring which is all of your viewfinder settings like your exposure peaking your like zebra peaking all that sort of stuff 
Uh, you've also got your SDI output and all that. Frame lines, you, this camera is insane, it does everything. So anything you want to do, as far as that's concerned, you can do it. So first up, when we're testing the lens, we need to make sure that we line up with our test subject. In this case, it is a clapperboard because SAE will still not buy us a focus uh, mapping sheet. Our bokeh test, we want to make sure that our iris is fully open. For our first test, we want to send our focus all the way to one side, and then check our bokeh. And we want to bring it all the way through that side. With that, we can also test our focus breathing, which we can see as we come closer, it slightly zooms in. Whereas when we're focusing away, it breathes away from us. All right, so next we'll measure our lens distortion. So for that one, we need to make sure that our pan is turned back a bit and then unlock our pan on the side. And then as we move the camera to the side, we can see what kind of distortion this lens has, whether it's pin cushion or barrel distortion. Or if you're feeling a bit wacky, moustache distortion. So that just shows us what we've got and then we'll lock that off again. So lens halation is basically when you have a source of light, the amount of fuzziness around the light. As we focus on here, we can see that we have a little bit of halation, but very little amount. So we don't have much halation on this lens, uh, but some lenses, particularly anamorphic, tend to have quite a bit of halation as well as uh, older, more vintage lenses. Now, like I said before, we don't actually have a focus chart so we can check uh, our distortion, but uh, once SAE gets a hold of that, that will be part of our setup process. Now, next, we want to check our close focus distance. Now, with this lens, it actually says on the side uh, how close we get. So, uh, most lenses run in uh, Imperial, I believe. I, I forget which way around it is, but the American system, because for some reason, you know, we have to all bend down these to the Americans. So, we have our actual written distance from the end of the lens here to show what the minimum focus distance is. So, if we're going all the way to the closest, you can see it's three foot three inches, well, a little bit closer than that. But if we see and compare it, oh, and you can flip this screen around so you can actually see what you're filming if you're in front of the camera. So we are in focus about there, which if you'd measure that, that would be you know, about three foot three inches. All right, so next we are mounting our handles to the camera so that we can uh, have it shooting for more uh, shoulder shoot, uh, shoulder mounted shooting and doco shooting. All right, so first what we want to do is we want to take our arms. Now there's one arm with a button on it with a, was it RS cable? And screw them onto this. Now important to note that if you are mounting it, don't try and turn it while it's screwed in. Otherwise we will end up with the rest of SAE's tripods. So we want to run that to our RS connector here. You line up your red dot and then do it in. Make sure that they are on a similar angle. And whatever's ergonomic for you. Now we go to the next step, which is actually taking it off of the tripod. So we actually have a release latch on here, which releases the camera from the base plate that attaches to the tripod for our quick release, which lets us easily go from tripod mounted shooting to handheld shooting so then like that now if the viewfinder is too close there is a latch on this side of the camera which lets you move this rail on the front up and down or forward and backwards as well as a latch on the bottom here which lets us move the actual camera body itself and when you want to put it back on take it from the front and you slide it onto the rail So, and once you're on, lock in place, and when you're done, turn off the camera, hold down uh, the button for three to five seconds, depends what settings you got, and then you're all set. You're ready to shoot with your Ari Alexa. Oh, Ari, uh, what's it called? Amira. Amira. Ari Amira. <laughs> cool, thanks for watching.